Hi. Uh, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Mindomo, a really powerful tool that's part of the D2L package, to uh, to create not only a mind map but actually a um, an essay outline that will simplify the writing process for you. So, um, because I need a topic uh, for this uh, video, uh, I decided to choose one of my favorite figures in history, Cyrus the Great. And I'm going to start with a very simple inquiry question. Was Cyrus the Great really great? Um, and uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the stuff I've already found, but also uh, try and show you um, how you can add more content as you go. So first of all, if I want to add any content or any ideas off this main page or this main bubble, excuse me, all I need to do is click in the top right corner and I can insert a topic here, and I could type, uh, let's see, internal policies. Okay, here we go. And I can actually move that around quite easily. And you'll notice too that as I move it around, this red line forms. So basically what that allows me to do is if I decide, you know what, I really want it to be connected to this idea, I can now connect to the great man theory instead. Now I'm going to try and put it, there we go. So I'm just going to reconnect it there. Okay. And then I can build subtopics uh, quite easily uh, by um, just clicking here and adding more thoughts off that initial bubble. And each of these again can be moved. You see how it'll move around quite easily and I can connect it to other thoughts. And that can become really handy if you decide that um, your initial thought about where something should go uh, has changed. So let me show you, um, to give you a bit of context on the things I've already done with this. So one of the things that defined Cyrus the Great uh, is his treatment of conquered people. So um, first of all, he's kind of uh, famous for uh, being well received by the people he is about to counter, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, conquer. So there are actually cases of um, uh, cities seeing Cyrus's army on the way, looking at their own leader and tossing out that leader and opening up the gates and warmly inviting Cyrus in. Uh, and to uh, support that claim, I've actually got a, a, um, a quotation from a primary source uh, outlining the number of uh, different civilizations in the area who actually uh, did just that, just who uh, warmly welcomed um, Cyrus uh, into their kingdoms. Uh, he was also infamous for um, following the legal and religious traditions of those he conquered. So uh, there's this great story that I've got here that's uh, translated uh, from actually the Cyrus Cylinder, which we'll return to in just one moment. Um, and in this quotation, we learn that uh, the current king of Babylon at this time uh, rejected a lot of the traditions of the Babylonian people, including uh, his participation, his mandatory participation in a, in a ceremony with the priest of Marduk, who uh, was supposed to slap and kind of embarrass the king in public to show that he was below the gods. And uh, this king refused to do that. And so what's interesting about Cyrus, he's actually a Persian king, conquers Babylon, and one of the first things he does is he walks into the temple and asks the, the priest to accompany him outside so that he can participate in this ceremony and be um, slapped and embarrassed by this priest in front of the entire population of people he just quote unquote conquered. Uh, and it's that sort of activity that actually endeared him to the people he conquered. Um, and another, um, another detail from the past that I think is relevant is uh, he, uh, Cyrus the Great actually freed the Israelites from Babylon and in the Bible, in the Old Testament, he's actually the only Gentile who is referred to as uh, Messiah. Uh, and I believe the actual word for that in ancient Hebrew is Sirach. Um, but I want to also point out to you here that what I've done is I've actually created the in-text citations, or sorry, the, the, uh, the uh, footnotes uh, for um, these uh, sources directly in here. And this took me a little bit of extra time, certainly, but the benefit for having this all in one place, having your primary sources here and here, is that when we switch over to this view, the view is outline, 
and we wait for it to generate. So you can see what it does. It, it actually takes all our ideas. There's our subtopic, his treatment of the conquered, and there's our subtopics uh, here. And it actually has the, um, the quotation here from the sources, right? Plus, it actually has this, the, uh, the, the footnote right below it. So when I go to the, when I get to the writing process, I actually start writing my essay. You can see how uh, much easier it is for me to find this stuff. It's, I, I don't have to go back through my sources. I have it right here, and that's really useful. So I'm going to show you a couple other things that uh, make this mind map tool really, really powerful. Now, while videos and images won't translate over to... Um, to uh, the outline itself, you can still use them uh, in the mind map to help you visualize your own thinking. So for example, if I'm thinking about Cyrus the Great's laws, uh, he was uh, well known for uh, being quite tolerant of other cultures. And in fact, he's credited with uh, writing a declaration of human rights uh, roughly 2,000 years before the UN writes its Declaration of Human Rights. And he wrote it on a cylinder, which I've actually uh, prepared here. Here's an image of that cylinder. Uh, and I could, if I wanted to, add that here as a frame of reference to remind myself uh, what this topic's about. And then I can continue adding subtopics as I did on the other side and developing those ideas a little bit more. Okay. So let's imagine that I populated the rest of this. I've got my treatment conquered here. Maybe I'm, I've got a section dedicated to, to military conquests, including his conquest of Lydia and, and other empires in the region. And uh, maybe I actually want to develop um, a little bit of the great man theory because, well, if I'm dealing with the concept of greatness, I should probably define that. Um, once I've got all these subtopics identified, I could actually change this question into uh, a thesis. And so the way I like to think about a thesis is it's really the one sentence or two sentence answer to whatever my question was. And my essay is the long answer to that question. So let's imagine that uh, I actually decide to get rid of the internal policies and I decide to simply write something like uh, Cyrus. Earn the name of the, uh, let's see, let's try it. So that's great. Earned his reputation. Well, actually, just change it. Deserves his title. Let's say this. Deserves his title due to his um, treatment of Conquered civilizations, his military uh, conquests, and his forward thinking laws. And given the nature of what I'm writing here, I think I'll probably take that and put it there. Okay. So let's imagine I'm going with. Uh, Oh, and due to his, I should actually change that to due to his military conquests, his treatment of conquered civilizations and his forward thinking laws. Okay, so let's imagine I've decided to, uh, that this is my answer to the question and therefore it's my answer to the thesis. And I've developed the rest of my ideas fully and I've got more primary sources that I've embedded here with the, uh, with the appropriate um, footnotes as well. So now when I go to my outline, what I'll have is my thesis here, and then I will have uh, those same sources here. And you note too that I have, again, imagine I fully developed those. I have all my points for military conquests, all my points for laws, uh, the ideas from the great man theory that I might use in my introduction. Uh, and remember, ooh, I haven't joined the, the topic of economics. So if I go back here, I might decide that given what I've written here, that might actually want to get rid of economics because maybe it just doesn't fit with what my focus is. But this approach, um, while it lends itself really well to a shorter essay, say a, a five, six paragraph essay, 
uh, all you need to do really if it's a longer essay is to fully develop your subtopics here and instead of having say one big paragraph dedicated to this maybe you have two or three paragraphs that uh, fully explore each of these ideas so uh, I hope you experiment a little bit with Mindomo. I think it's a really powerful tool uh, that students could use to uh, simplify the essay writing process.